Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Goddess Suite. This is Holistic Gals. And we have a great treat for you tonight here at the Goddess Suite. We have the beautiful Tiffany Janae, and she is going to be talking about yoni eggs. The yoni is one of our favorite topics here at the Goddess Suite. We are all about uplifting our fellow goddesses and helping just heal humanity. Um, Before we get started... We'd like to dedicate a song to tonight's show. This is a oldie but goodie, not too far of a throwback, but just enough to kind of age myself. Um, going to play a little bit of Yo-Yo with featuring Ice Cube. You can't play with my Yo-Yo, and we'll be right back. So go ahead, get your cup of conscious tea, and we'll speak with you in a few. All righty. Man, we gotta find somebody that's down for hers, man. All these girls sipping, man. Who you think fit the category? Category, 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 category. My name is Yo Yo. I'm not a one one. I like to throw so swift. It's got to be a gift. So yo, let the people live. As I rip and rhyme and rap and slap, all the girls who can't adapt to the fact I get the eight ball all the day. The earrings that wear are called the dolphin. Check the food.
yo, yo, yo. As always, that is a definite song, definite song you want to play with. You don't want anybody playing with the yoni that shouldn't be. <laughs> Mystic Feather. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> You know, we can get steady with the yoni. We can do whatever we want with our own yoni. <laughs> that is right. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my. So, like I said, we had a beautiful guest on tonight. Yes, I was looking at some of her videos, too, and they were so entertaining. So um, I'm just looking forward to this goddess being on tonight and going in about this yoni egg and how we can use it and and make it a part of our daily practice, spiritual practice, because it's a lot of things going on with our yoni. <laughs> yeah, so like I said earlier, I mean, this is like we we get emails all the time from women with yoni issues, so we mm-hmm. always end up coming back, addressing things that we have on our expert guests and let them talk about how we can heal our, you know, yonis. I believe that if you heal a yoni, you heal the nation, you know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow, absolutely, absolutely. All right, so let's see. So Miss Tiffany Janae, she is the owner, no, she is the co-owner of Organic Blood Yoni Eggs along with her husband, Malik Zaki. She is an entrepreneur, a motivational speaker, and a holistic health advocate. She has an extensive knowledge in semi-precious stones, creative marketing approaches, business branding, and distribution. As a pioneer in the Yoni Wellness Movement, Organic Blood aims to unify all women to join in the goddess movement. Yay, goddesses. Tiffany's passion for Yoni Eggs, Yoni Wellness, Entrepreneurship, Social Media Marketing, Health and Wealth, Relationships, Health and Wealth, Relationship Sustainability, Manifestation, and Women's Sensuality has allowed her to tour around the world connecting with individuals on their self-healing journey. Without further ado, we would like to welcome... Goddess Tiffany Janae, welcome to the Goddess Suite. (laughs) (laughs) Hello. Hi, Goddess. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us, Goddess. Uh, We just, uh, we're honored for you to come on our show because there is some serious healing that needs to go on with the yonis. We get so much mail, uh, so many emails and questions about um, women who have issues going on down there. And we're just honored to have you on to discuss how we can better take care of that area and how important. Yeah, for sure. Let's talk about it. All right. Uh, well, first, guys, how did you get involved in the young egg business? Um, well, I became a wife about in 2008, and so during that time, I had always dreamed of being a wife, but I never knew, like, what that actually meant and how I was going to facilitate that to happen. So mm-hmm. I started seeking out knowledge as far as in what it meant to be um married and to be a good wife and what that was going to look like to me. I started studying with Kenya K. Stevens from Juju Mama, and mm-hmm. she taught me a lot about feminine energy and about just more about myself as a woman. And from there, she actually recommended to me about yoni eggs. And so I went on the hunt to find them at the time. Back then, it was just, it, was, it seems like a long time ago, but it wasn't that long ago. It was about three years ago. Um, there was only about three companies that were providing yoni eggs, and none of them had an e-commerce website. It was all done through a blog platform. So mm-hmm. I went through and I um, wanted to place an order, and that were required sending an email. I had to wait a few days to get a response back that they didn't actually have that in stock. And so that just continued on for a while. And 
um, I ended up, like, I was trying to get it for birthday gifts. The date passed. So I was like, man, there's got to be a better way to get these. These just seem so amazing. You've got to figure out a way. And then I just mm-hmm. attached it to me, um, the an avenue to get them manufactured and made. And that's how it went. And I was the first person to put up an e-commerce website for Yoni Ace. And um, now there's a whole industry that's birthed from it. Oh, wow. Well, I know because when I did search, because we, we I don't know if you know uh, Reverend Goddess Charmaine, um, that's where I first heard about Yoni eggs through her. And when I Googled them, it's, it's just so many different companies and, um, all over the Internet. And I don't, I'm like, wow, which one do you choose? <laughs> so many. So you are definitely a pioneer in that area. So we definitely get honored to you and thank that spirit led you to um, be a part of um, helping women get more in touch with their own. Now, can you go into how using the young egg, how it can assist, assist the, the goddesses? Yeah, so there, I like to, I mean, at the base root, what it's dealing with is crystal therapy. And crystals are actual living beings from the earth. They've been around for millions and millions of years. Uh, and they are grown and cultivated in the earth, just like all things natural mm-hmm. here in this world are. And so they have held form for a long time, and they have a lot of knowledge stored in them. And because they're living beings, they all have their own frequency or vibration that they're on. So just having them around in your space is very transformative. But as women, our most creative point, our focus is our, our womb space. That's where all life comes from. That's how we give birth to everything that's here, just not just physical babies, but to your, your thoughts and your dreams and your visions as well all come and are cultivated in that space. And so the more that we can develop a relationship with that center, the more powerful that we are to be focused creatrice. And so using a yoni egg in connection with that space just helps to bring that relationship, that focus there, to begin to either heal that space or to open up communication um, to establish a healthy relationship. Oh, wow. And uh, God is Tiffany, what do you think is the number one reason why a lot of women are having so many issues with their young um, at this day and time? Um, I think that a lot of women come from abuse, um, sexual trauma, and a lot of suppression and shame. And so because of that, a lot of the things as far as in discovering sexuality and sensuality has had to be done in a dark space. And when we're in the darkness like that, sometimes unfavorable things can happen. So I think a lot of women are dealing with, are wanting to overcome that. Um, But I think that that's a lot of the trauma that's there. Okay. What do you think about, like, emotional issues related to to their mothers or or like a lack of sisterhood, do you, it, can that possibly affect what's going on with the young as well? Yeah, definitely. It's going to be different things for different people, but I, I definitely think that that contributes to it a lot. There's a big disconnection between the women, and we need each other. We need to be talking to each other to even learn more about our sacred space and what it, uh, about uh, womanhood and femininity, whatever stage that we're at. And um, I was I was watching this thing recently. It was like a, a parody on these Disney characters. And it was like they were battling back and forth with each other. And it was funny, but at, at the core of it, what it was to me was that cattiness between women. It's like that's what's promoted in media mm-hmm. is that we shouldn't like each other. We should be tearing each other apart with like, you don't look as good as me. You're not... Um, you're not doing better than me, you know, all these kind of things. That's how we've been taught to feel about one one another. So there's a huge disconnection, and um, that's of my interest is to bring that sisterhood vibe back to as many areas as we can. Absolutely, absolutely. And, be, and, and I definitely agree with you on that because it seems like women, at, um, and not all women, but, you know, when you're trying to connect with women, they seem guarded or, like, you know, you're trying to make a connection and, and you're on that sisterhood vibe, but they, you know, they're closed. They're like, why does she want to talk to you? Why? You know, how can <laughs> women get past that? I mean, it's like, you know, you're trying to open yourself to 
to be more uh, in that sisterhood space, but you you get a lot of resistance from a lot of the sisters. Um, I don't know. I mean, there's a there's a reflection in there. There's a root in, in there for self too. So that's part of your own self work is to discover what that is and how to change that uh, that reflection that you're getting back. That's what it's been for me, you know. Um, mm-hmm. Anywhere where I feel some sort of resistance from, it's always something that I can strengthen in myself to ho- help overcome that. Beautiful. All right. Now let's get into the yoni. Um, a lot of women, a lot of the women that write us, they really, really express how they have bodies touching themselves, inserting things in their bodies. Could this practice help them overcome those feelings? <laughs> Maybe, but it could be on that same list of things that they're not going to want to do. Um, okay. Yeah, but I mean, I don't. There's a lot of clients that I have that get the eggs, and they're not putting them inside of them. They're just carrying them around. the The shape of the egg is it's symbolic. It represents new life, and it represents mm-hmm. rebirth. So, just having that around in in your space is great. One of the things that I love about this whole journey is that. I've watched my clients go from um, being closed off in their own definition of a way, and then now that they got into this, it just opened up more doors for them to be like, okay, Mm -hmm. let me pay attention to what I'm eating, how I'm expressing myself, um, the way I take care of myself, the way I interact with others. It opens them up to more things. So, And I don't think you need to put that inside of you to do that right away. Um, Mm -hmm. But once you develop that relationship, you know, it could put you on that path for sure. Great, great. So those sisters that wrote in, you don't have to start off like that. You know, you heard what the sister said. You can carry it around with you <laughs> and, uh, you know, progress from there. Now, which which egg do you feel is um, the most cleansing for someone that might have had some sort of um, trauma to their youngest? Well, it's whatever someone feels called to deal with. I mean, we're dealing mm-hmm. with energetic virtues here. So these are mm-hmm. things that a person has to decide that they're ready to face and conquer. We all have our own versions of trauma. And mm-hmm. whatever it is that you're in that space at this particular moment that you're willing to heal and deal with, like that is what defines your journey. So the mm-hmm. yoni egg that you choose is based off of that. You know, like um, right now you could be experiencing or experience trauma due to a sexual inter like a sexual interaction or it could have just been like a verbal type of thing. And so mm-hmm. you might you know, you have to decide which one of those things you're you're willing to deal with right now. And then I, I advise choosing from a space right there. The the Yoni Ape will be like a companion to you as you go through that process to help you with like the smooth transition to overcome those things. Okay. All right. So when a woman is in search of uh, particular yoni egg, would she, uh, would it be beneficial for her to look up uh, the particular stone or crystal to see if that would, uh, the type of egg she needs to clear certain issues or um, would, she, would she be more, you know, if she's finding it uh, because, you know, some stores sell them, would she be able to just go into the store and it'll be, she'll be drawn to a particular stone with you know, which is the best way for her to seek out what is the best home for her? Yeah, on our website, yoniaids.com, everything is on there. So uh, we have everything broken down into chakra collections. So that Mm -hmm. helps a lot to kind of focus more in on what specific uh, energetic body that you're dealing with. But then we also have full descriptions of each eggs and really beautiful pictures because I, I believe you're dealing with li- with living beings. And so the way that you attract that being into your life is the same way that you would attract anything else, another human, um, an animal, something that you like as far as in clothing material or whatever. It's how you feel. Sometimes you read about it and it stimulates the intellectual. And so that would represent the the description properties that we have written out on the site. 
but sometimes it's just aesthetic. Like, that's just beautiful. I just want that, you know? Um, and then mm-hmm. there's other parts where it's like a, a vibration. Like, I feel something from this, this thing. I feel like I should be connected. So when you go through our, our different categories on the website, like, you know, use all of those different senses of ways to choose what you need. Oh, wow. Now, is, is it beneficial to, like, say certain affirmations with the egg or to pray over it or bless it? Yeah, for sure. It's it's all up to you, however you, you feel what you want to use. But I have a video on my YouTube channel, which is um, on organic blood. That's the youtube.com forward slash organic blood. And mm-hmm. it's basically talking about um, – what to do with yoni egg use and care and what I recommend, you know, what I would do with my stone when I get it. And that's basically charging it with intention. So for mm-hmm. me, I like to get in a quiet space and just clear my energy out and focus on what is it that I'm, I'm using this stone for. Like, let me, I remember why I, I know I bought it and I know I wanted it. So, but now let me bring back my attention of why exactly I wanted it. And then to charge that into there and, develop this communication with it like hey what's up stone thanks for coming into my life here's what what i'm looking to work on with you and then you know when you guys stone's like okay cool i accept then it's like you know you can move it to your inside of your womb space if that's what you desire Mm -hmm. wow that's cool okay all right now do you have um a particular stone that's like your favorite to work with I do. Right now, I love the carnelian because it's so pretty, and every single one of my carnelian eggs is different. And so it's just really mind-blowing to me that nature is just that gorgeous. I mean, all the stones are really pretty, but the carnelian has all these different patterns in them. Sometimes it's just solid. Sometimes it looks very, like, um, I don't know how simple. Like, I got one that I kept for myself because it had an O and a B in there, which is like my company, Organic Lead, and there was an O and a B just from the natural process in the stone. So, yeah, I'm definitely crushing on my carnelian right now. Oh, wow. Now, how did you come up with I was My next question is how did you come up with the name Organic Blood? Uh, organic Blood came from my husband and I um, about, about let's see, been almost 10 years now we we um got together as boyfriend and girlfriend and we knew that when we got together we were going to be together for a while so we Mm -hmm. wanted to create a legacy and we defined what that meant what that was going to look like and we decided that our job that we were working wasn't going to fit in alignment with that plan so we just quit Mm -hmm. our job and we gave up everything and um we basically spent like seven years being homeless, just living from place to place, like not generating any income at all, just living off of food stamps and like for the first time ever experiencing that. But during that time, we had a lot of time on our hands to just figure stuff out. (laughs) So we started studying about um, the body and about how food works with it and how energy works and, and the mind and all that stuff. And so we gave, we started cleansing and changing our diet and my husband was 300 pounds, and I was overweight. We had, like, a bunch of health problems and stuff that we were dealing with. And so we switched that up, and um, we, my husband's now 180 pounds, and we oh, cared wow. us of all these, these different wow. things. And um, so uh, organic blood was, like, like, he's from the hood, you know, so that's just what they, mm-hmm. how they speak. Uh-huh. So everybody's like, what are you doing? Like, why are you eating all that food, all that crazy stuff? Like, who are you? And um, mm-hmm. so my husband's response back to that was like, I'm organic blood. And so it came from that. But um, so that's just because, like, everything we do is, like, organic. You know, we want mm-hmm. everything to be to the root of things. Like, how can we be holistic about things? And organic means, like, stuff in its most basic, wholesome form, you know. And then blood is, like, everything. Blood is life. That's our every yeah. single thing. And it's what connects us to the earth. And the other thing is is that going with organic blood, it's kind of deep, but um, chlorophyll is the, the blood of plants, which is what makes plants green. And when we drink that, like, you can correct a lot of stuff in your body from just infusing your blood with plant blood. So, you know, blood is just, it's really, it's everything. It's life. Wow, that's an amazing story. And it's one I'm so thankful that you are sharing because, so many of us are like, 
caught up in the world and trying to make money and not following our passions and our dreams. And, I mean, I just commend you for, you know, stepping out on faith and, I mean, just weathering the storm and then, you know, the final outcome is that, you know, you're a successful businesswoman. Um, I mean, and there's so many women, women but men as well, but people who need to hear this because it's so easy to chase the dollar and lose your passion. How did you all stay, you know, as far as with your passion when things just look so, you know, like, you know, you don't have enough? How did you maintain the passion to keep going? Well, it was really like no choice. You know, I had committed to living off of faith and just being connected to my internal God. Like that was my devotion that I was giving over to say that I want to be who I am, who I was meant to be here to like to come here to be. And so (laughs) I'm pledging myself to making that come into awareness. And so there was, there was no other choice. Like that's just what it was. You know, um, and then anything that came up that felt discomfort, it was learning how to overcome that discomfort. But there was no submission to that. Like there was nowhere else to go but where I was going. So I just had to figure out how to how to find the joy in things. And it's still what I do. Like this is I have a a, a great life that I live in. Stuff, but life I haven't hit a, a place in life where it's like everything is just awesome because I'm making money off of my business. It's, it's still the same formula for anything, like when there's discomfort, figure out how to adjust and be a victor in that situation and not a victim, you know? Mm-hmm. Yes, oh, yes. Oh, wow, her story is so inspiring, and I just challenge people out there, because I know if someone listening it really that message was for, because it's so hard to look what it looks like in front of you to follow your dreams and passions, but Tiffany is definitely a living example that if you just have faith and you keep pressing forward that whatever your passion is, it can become a reality for you as well. So I really thank her for sharing that. And also I just wanted to congratulate you on the weight loss. Now, how was it? Now, by you all being in that situation, is that what kind of pushed you towards being more health conscious? No, it all came together as one. It, um, I'm here for self-mastery. Like, I don't know what anybody else is doing for their time, but for, for me, like, I'm here to master this, this experience because if I have the choice to, like, to reincarnate back to do this human experience again or to do something way more divine, like, I want door B. So um, when I was submitting to the process, like, I wanted to be the best version of myself. Like, I wasn't in a space where... I felt like money could could help me through everything. It was like money is a tool to deal with the human aspect of what I'm doing here in the physical world, but it's not the only currency. Like my currency is also my mind and my feminine energy and my mouthpiece and my intentions and my love and my, you know, like there's just so much more self than just how much money can I make. And so, um, that, you know, that, that just came with it. Like, you have to be healthy if you're here to win your, this human flesh. Like, that's just it. And it's not about being healthy. Like, that's just some, to me, that's like a corny term to speak to, the, to what is already being done in this world. But it's like, that's basic. Taking care mm-hmm. of your body is basic. And any way that we're off from that is sickness. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, it's not, this is not, you know, healthy like, no trend to, like, try to be somebody cool, like, I'm healthy or I'm different. Like, you know, I'm human. In order for my body to work, it needs to have proper fuel or otherwise I'm going to be sick. And then my whole energy is going to be used, spent on being sick. And why would I choose that reality if there's another reality that's available to me? So, Beautifully said. Beautifully said, Tiffany. And I really like what you just said about – Oh gosh, about it's more than the, how much money that she can make. Because once again, we get so caught up in money and gotta have, yeah, we have to have it to live. But on the flip side, it cannot put a value on your self worth and your self value. Can't allow it to. So, 
It was beautiful, beautifully said, beautifully said. Thanks. I mean, I'm a fan of, like, the hustle and the grind and the go-getterness. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm a fan of material stuff. My planet, uh-huh. like, I'm from Venus. My ruling planet is beauty. You know, so I love the that part of it. But I just think that when the sickness comes, when you're doing things that go against what makes you healthy it, mm-hmm. to get that dollar, you know. And I, and I feel like a lot of people spin themselves out just focusing on one thing, it's like they go into this tunnel vision of, like, all that matters is this money, and I'm going to get it at all costs. And mm-hmm. that's, that's a sickness to me, you know, not to, not judgment on anybody else, but for me personally, that felt like sickness when I did that. And and yeah. I have to report to prove that that was sickness to me, you know. And so um, now it's more about, like, I definitely want as much money as I can get because money buys great tools in this mm-hmm. world and it takes me to beautiful places. So I'm I'm definitely a fan of that. But I'm not gonna yeah. do that at any cost. And and oh. now I'm in a, I put myself in a position where I could define what I'm gonna do for money. And if I ever mm-hmm. have to be without money again, I've been without it for so long that I know how to survive and that I'm not a slave to that. You know? So mm-hmm. like it's cool. Like I'm cool in any environment and you know, with or without money. Beautiful goddess that knows who she is. <laughs> what, what's your what's your sign, Tiffany? A uh, Libra. Libra. Oh, okay. Okay. Balance. Okay. All right. <laughs> mm-hmm. <Yeah. laughs> now let let's talk about um, feminine energy. Um, is there a way for a woman to tell if she's not? Um, in that space where she's using her feminine energy? Are there, like, any certain signs that she can tell that she can, you know, utilize more feminine energy? Um, I, yeah, I suppose. But I didn't – feminine energy shows up in so many different ways, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just think that if you are – I mean, you're always embodying feminine energy in some sort of way. Um, mm-hmm. Now, what do you want to tone up and tone down is a more specific focus, you know? Um, mm-hmm. Like being this go, go, go society, like working and doing things, like that's considered masculine. But mm-hmm. we have the ability to do it so you could still be a feminine within that, you know? Um, but I think you know. Like I think a person knows when you're out of balance in, in whatever mm-hmm. way. and It never hurts to put some honey on those lips and to put some sweet smell on your neck, you know? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Now, um, what way, okay, I'm getting a question. Um, what which particular stone would you recommend for a woman who's trying to connect with her sexuality? Uh, something from my root chakra collection. The root chakra is, or the sacral um, collection, so anything mm-hmm. that activates those lower um, chakras, that, that energy down there, that'll help get that fire going. But that's just like, I mean, to me, that's like a cliche answer, mm-hmm. but really, like, to activate your sexual energy, like, you would need to know what blocks you, because that might be something that has to do more so with your crown chakra or your third eye, meaning that you're all up in your mind. So instead of being in the moment of feeling and experiencing pleasure, you're more so, like, on that to-do list or, like, um, assessing the whole situation of of what's going on. And it might be something that has to do with your throat chakra where you're not speaking your desires clearly and you're not making Mm -hmm. yourself be heard, you know. So, like, it it really can be from from anything to activate Mm -hmm. your sexual energy. That's more of, like, like, what's going on specifically type of thing. Okay, so so if a woman wasn't sure, like, what you know, how this is all coming about, would it be beneficial for her to, like, get some sort of energy work done to find out if it's coming from a crown or a certain um, Well, on my side in particular, I have on under each category for the chakras, there's something on there that tells about, um, how to know if you're in balance or if you're out of balance. So you can go there 
But I think that if you really want to know the answer, ways will start to open up for you to attract to you what it is that you need to see to be able to get the answers to your questions. That's just how life works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, for women who are going through certain types of um, womb issues like fibroids and uh, PCOs, endometriosis, uh, could the yoni eggs be beneficial to help helping them heal those issues? Maybe they believe in using it as a tool. It, it, the yoni eggs, like, it's not a medical tool, so it's not something that can be prescribed for any particular thing that's going on with the body. But those, anything, in my belief, anything that's happening mm-hmm. in the body that is manifested as disease is an energetic um misalignment and so it's really just about correcting the energy or realigning the energy to a different frequency so that has to do with your thoughts um Mm -hmm. with past with emotions like how you're handling things which you're um like where you're at mentally like what are you dealing what kind of tools do you have to deal with the things that are coming up in your life and if you don't have the the correct tools to to allow you to skate through situations, but then you need to be acquiring those tools to get those things. And so cysts and fibroids and and things of those nature, like that's just, um, it's just energy. You need to be moving that energy in different directions. And so, yeah, in that aspect, a yoni egg could could help you if you believe that you're going to bring this stone into your life to help you with making those shifts, to get you to speak your truth, to get you to forgive somebody, to get you to start caring for your body, you know what I'm saying? Like that, yeah, that stone could help you with those things. All right. Um, now, we we talk about the young age. Do you all offer anything for the males, like a gasolino, <laughs> like a crystal lingo or something? No, but the yoni eggs are for the men because if you heal the women, you're going to heal the men and the children too. So it's a tool for everybody. And I love that when the men come by and they buy these stones for the women because it's the best investment um, Mm -hmm. to really directly affect her. Um, But aside from that, I do have a metaphysical boutique. It's it's, um, at organicbloodline.com. And on that site, I have different things for men like just pocket stones or jewelry, um, sage wands, like different metaphysical type tools, but nothing equivalent directly to the yoni age. All right. Now, how how long ago did this um, practice begin as far as um, the yoni age? Is it from India? Um, I think many civilizations connected with it because it's semi-precious stones. You know, you go to Mexico and, and they have them all over out there, they have these semi-precious stones in the shape of eggs out there. So it, mm-hmm. it's really hard to tell. The most relevant or most prevalent information that's available out there is that people are just saying it came from China. But when I started um, put my team together to develop our packaging for our stones and our new branding, like all of us came together and channeled Egypt. And so that's where, you know, um, I believe that I have some past lives in Egypt. And so mm-hmm. I feel very connected to that energy. And when mm-hmm. I started creating my logo and just the whole inspiration for everything, that's what came through to me. So I don't have an actual textbook or um, anything like that to reference that, but that's what okay. I feel. And when I see some other, I've been studying some, some history and stuff and looking at different statues and artwork and things like that from different civilizations, like Asians, Asian civilizations, um, different African ones. Uh, there's just different different cultures and Within mm-hmm. those those statues and stuff, there's um, women in there with eggs in their hands. So whether or not that specifically was the yoni egg, I don't know. But I just think that it, it's something that has been around, and I'm not too sure on exactly where it's at. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, well. Oh, go I ahead. have a question. Um, I have a question, Tiffany. Has uh-huh. anyone ever gotten... I know this is a question that other people may have too. Has a yoni egg ever gotten stuck in the yoni? Yeah, and it's awesome. Yeah, so, really? <laughs> yeah. Um, so there's different kinds of yoni eggs that you can get out there, but the ones that I sell specifically are they don't have holes in them, which means that you can't put a string in there. 
And um, I have a, a client base that I deal with on a regular basis, about 1,400 women that I'm in constant communication with that are um, clients of mine. And what I've learned from them over the years is that the yoni egg will go inside of you and it will go sometimes nestle into spaces that you can't get it out of. And it's not going to come out of any other place. We have a blocking, which is called our cervix. So wherever that egg came in, it's going to come back out that same space. But it is nestled sometimes in different areas. And um, what that does is that invokes a panic on the woman because she wants to (laughs) control that situation and say, like, no, I'm ready for it to come out for this reason. You know, I have a date tonight or um, I don't want to wear it or whatever it is. I want to basically control my healing. I want to control how this this tool is going to work. And the egg is its own living being. And it does, like, some crazy stuff. Like, even in my own space, like in my office, they'll just disappear. And I'll, and I know exactly where I put them, and it's just gone. And then mm-hmm. it's so, like, whatever it is that's being communicated, I have to tune into that. And then when, when the energy is shifted, it'll come back, like, be right back where, where I knew it was at. And so it uh-huh. does really crazy things like that. So it'll do that inside of you, inside of you too. And what I always encourage people to do during that time is to write down and journal. Write down what's going on. Remember what your intention was for that stone. And then write down what, what you're experiencing because maybe you're rejecting the shift that needs to happen. Or maybe um, oh. right now is the, the pinnacle moment where this is the letting go, letting things um, flow instead of controlling things is what needs mm-hmm. to happen for this change that you're asking for to facilitate. So. I think it's really awesome. And I have a video on my YouTube channel, um, youtube.com forward slash organic blood, and it's called Yoni Egg Drama, and it talks all about that, basically. <laughs> and more Yoni Egg so. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. And you said that, it, um, that sometimes they disappear because we've had, well, I know I've had that happen with some of my crystals and stones. Like, mm-hmm. no, I put them in a particular place, and then I go back and I can't find it, and it pops up behind the couch or somewhere. I know I didn't put it. What what specifically is going on when they do that? Uh, it's their way of communicating. That's you know that's the best way that I can think of it. That I've tuned into listening to them because they're really they're really cool. Like they're for real about what they do, and um, <laughs> they are living beings. It's just like a dog. I've had a dog before where me and her were in such sync with each other that I knew mm-hmm. that our communication wasn't about my voice and fluctuation. It was just simply like she really understood what I was saying to her. And I, at the same time, could hear her too when she, when I would know that she would need water. It would come like a download in my brain, like, Bougie needs water. Bougie wants mm-hmm. to go outside. You know, like I would just feel that communication. And I would look at her sometimes like, what the heck are you? Like, how are we <laughs> talking to each other like this? Like, this is crazy that I have this animal living in my house and we're talking to mm-hmm. each other. We don't even speak the same language. But the semi yeah. stuff, like, they're the same way, you know? Mm-hmm. Some people connect with dogs and some people can't communicate with dogs at all and only are into cats. Some people are friends with squirrels. You know what I'm saying? So, like, there's that real communication that's happening between us and other beings, and you just know it. And and that is their way of communicating to you. So you just have to listen to what they're saying to you and, like, decode it. Oh, wow. I'm telling you, because that was it's sweet, deep. huh? <laughs> <laughs> and you ever worked with uh, Moldavite? No. That, that's like a um, the piece of the meteor. I'm sorry. What did you say, Tiffany? Is that a piece of the meteor? Yeah, uh huh. It's like a like a dark green color. It's got a real spacey type energy, like otherworldly. <laughs> it's like a real different type of energy. Um, and it, what it does is, it's like it brings things to the surface that you might have been trying to overlook or avoid for a long time, and it just like inst- instantaneously brings old stuff up. Uh-huh. Anything you've been trying to avoid. <laughs> but the energy um, is weird. I didn't know if you had carried that in the in the yoni egg or not. I don't know what kind of experience a woman might have putting it. <laughs> it's so so trippy. The energy of it is just so I don't know, it just feels like you're not grounded when you have it on you. It's just like a real strong kind of warpy, spacey, out of space type of energy when you have it on you or around. 
Mm-hmm. No, I never had that in a, that kind of, like, not as a yoni egg. Okay. Yeah, you you definitely have to have a hematite with that. If that was a yoni egg, you'd be climbing the walls, probably. <laughs> mine, look, mine has been missing for about, gosh, probably over a year now. I don't know, and that was my second one. So <laughs> it definitely goes, I guess everything came to the, you know, forefront and needed to and it says, I'm out of here. I'll be back later, you know. Uh-huh. Right. It's definitely yeah. weird. Because I, I, my husband, he kind of didn't believe in the crystals and stones, so I said, well, here, try this um, this motorbike and just put it where on you. So he put it in the truck. And I lied to you, now. He went out and then 30 minutes later, he said, dang, a ticket that I had from back in 2007, they pulled me over. <laughs> I mean, it's just crazy. Oh, wow. Yeah, it just brings, oh, God, it was like past, running in the past, boyfriends. I mean, it just brings Oh, my gosh, old, yes. Ooh. A lot of old stuff. <laughs> if it, And like they said, if you're not ready for the old stuff to come, if, you know, if you haven't cleared, you know, your closet or whatever, just leave it alone because mine disappeared too. And I was like, oh, okay, good. <laughs> I <just> I did. <laughs> too much. <laughs> Way too much. <laughs> oh, man, all at once. It's not like something this week. So it, it'll be like five different incidents and won't be, yes. be like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> yes, what's next? Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Ugh. Oh wow! But um, well, we've got some. We've got some people. We've got a lot of people on the line. If anyone has a question, press the number one, and then I'll be able to put put you through. I'll be able to see that you have your hand raised up. But people love. I'm people love talk about the young. The line is hot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yes, it always oh stays God. hot on the Joni talk or, or Lingam talk. <laughs> oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, do, now, do you study anything about um, the Lingam, Tiffany, or you just mainly focus on the, the Joni? I study my husband's Lingam. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, but <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> It's like, oh, okay. Um, no, I study Tantra, and I've been studying it for um, about five years now. And through Tantra, I learned a lot about the lingam and, and that. So, yeah. Okay. Now, is, um, is it possible to, well, I know we can use the Yoni and we are programming to do whatever, but as far as, like, manifestation, is there a particular one that might be uh, more beneficial to work with than the others? Um, well, no, they're all pretty good. I mean, you can use any mm-hmm. of them because what you're manifesting, like, I would use different ones. Like, if I'm focusing on prosky, I would use my green adventure. If I'm focusing on manifesting more passion into my relationships, I would use, like, my red jasper. If I wanted to manifest um, more, like, uh, visions and creative energy, I would go with something like a fluorite or a crystal quartz, you know, something from the, the third eye crown chakra type of. So any of them are good for depending on just switch them up with whatever you're working with. Okay. Well, I want. I was curious to know what, what's your top seller. Um, crystal quartz or rose quartz. Okay. Yeah. I'm the goddesses looking for love, or if I'm trying to bring more love into their life. That's understandable. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because everybody likes the rose quartz because they think she's so sweet because she's pink and she's like the feistiest stone that I have. Really? Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. As far as in people with, like, the most peculiar experiences or, like, their stones disappearing or staying inside of them for the longest, it's got to be rose quartz. What? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm <not> too spicy. <laughs> yeah, I'm 
mean, you wouldn't imagine, you know, everybody just automatically thinks, oh, kind, gentle, rose quartz, city, pink. I would have never thought that she would be the one that's, you know, that's got some spunk to her. <laughs> yeah, she does. <laughs> wow. Everybody's always put the rose quartz by your heart and, you know, thinking that's the only place that they can go, but now mm-hmm. we know that. <laughs> Now, do you? I, now, since I, when I thought about your name, I, I don't know why I thought that it was connected with the bloodstone. Do you have a bloodstone, Yoni Egg? I do. They'll be in our store, and um, by next week we'll have them. Oh, okay, okay. And yeah. those are most connected with um, the heart chakra as well. I'm not sure off the top of my head. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm going to take your word for it, though. Okay, because I have one, and I, I, it's green. And when I saw the name of it, I was expecting it to be red, but it's green. I think it's, it goes with the, the heart. But that was yeah, like it's the, green, and then it has, like, streaks of red, of red in it. Oh, okay. Okay, because, yeah, this one I had is, like, a dark green color, but... I would love to see the one with with the red streaks. And that's the color of the one that you're getting in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And where are you where are you located at? Um, I'm in Atlanta, but I travel the United States all throughout the year. Okay. And what is your uh the place that you travel to all, the most when you're um dealing with your stuff like when you're traveling, are you uh, distributing your stone? Yeah, I do um, events throughout the, the world, really. Um, so I just finished a tour here in the United States, the Sensual Goddess Tour, and then we're um, – but I, I'm constantly just doing different events. Like, people book me to come out. Uh, well, I'll be in Colorado in two weeks and then in Chicago um, in New York and Canada. So – we just go where the people call us. And have you, over the years, have you noticed the, uh, like an increase of women who are like demanding um, more information on the Yoni Age? Yeah, for sure. De- it's definitely <laughs> changed. <laughs> I can only imagine. Because I have, I, I've never heard of a Yoni Age, I swear, until we had that got particular goddess on and she was like, I mean, she charges her up too, but she also has lingam. And she she does YouTube videos too, and um, she puts those lingams on the altar. <laughs> she, uh-huh. she's like, she zones out. <laughs> and that <she> worship, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so that was my first taste of what is a yoni egg, because I've seen those other ones. It's, they're not eggs, but they look like some kind of beads or something. I saw them in a um, in like a magazine. I don't know if that's the. I know it's not the same thing, but I don't know if it does any clearing. But a lot of the Asian women do. They look like some sort of beads. Is that similar? Like they push the beads inside of them, pull them out. Oh, I don't know about those. The only beads I know that someone puts inside of them are anal beads. Oh, yeah, I don't care if you're talking about that. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay, maybe, maybe I got the whole wrong. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> I don't know. I know they were Jade. That's all I remember. <laughs> oh, goodness. No, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Oh wow! So, do you come to the East Coast often, or your main? Where, where is like the area you travel to the most during the year? Well, I don't consider. I mean, I live. I stay in Atlanta, so I figure I, I travel here the most because this isn't my home. It's just where I stay. So, I'm over here the most. But um, that's where I'm at. Okay. Yeah. Was your um uh, when you were growing up, did you have a particular religious upbringing, or you, were you like a free spirit, or you just 
march to the beat of your own drum or were you like in some, you know, Christian or Muslim type of household? Um, my mom was very spiritual, like growing up, so she taught me a lot about energy. She actually started me on crystals from like from a baby. I've had crystals around me. So I, was, I always say, like, I was raised by the mineral people because they've been in my life. They're, they've been caretakers in my life my whole entire life. Um, just now in the last few years have they taken the shape of eggs, but they've always been around, like, supporting me and guiding me. Um, but and my mom was an intuitive, so she did readings for a lot of her um, her work. So she always developed that skill of part of me of, of how to read energy and how to, um, like, understand the mind, I guess, or inner energetic bodies of other people and of things and situations. So mm-hmm. that was my upbringing was that, which is very like, you know, into energy. But then I dabbled into whatever interests me. Like my, some of my friends are the pastor kids. So I would go to church with them sometimes and hear about that and take mm-hmm. what I like and leave the rest. And um, so I, I just, you know, I've been a studier of all different paths I just like I like some of everybody's stuff but I don't like all of everybody's things you know like I'm into my own thing (laughs) right and that's how you should be you know what faithful resonates with you and keep it moving (laughs) wow so that that's very interesting like are most of your friends are they uh, Christian or they're uh, free spirited like you or um, most of my friends are superheroes. Okay. <laughs> wow. All right. For real. Now, really? <laughs> I believe. <laughs> I believe. I believe. Now, how did you and your husband um, connect? Like, was he Christian as well, or did he have a specific type of upbringing, or did? Uh, I'm just curious, like, did you all come into the, um, a similar consciousness at the same time, or were you? did you bring him into it, or did he uplift you into it? Um, I don't know that I ever came into anything. This is just kind of like how I was really born. I've just learned different different degrees of, of um, my knowledge based on where I'm at in life, but mm-hmm. um, I think... Malik might say the same thing for himself, but as far as in this physical world, we were we met working at a call center, um, and okay. we just connected on the same vibe of like we were talking about the same thing basically. So from there, we just instantly clicked, and we just been rolling with each other ever since then. Wow, that definitely sounds destined to be right there because it's so not too many brothers, you know, that connect with these type of. Um, spiritual things that a lot of us goddesses are into, so that's great. Are you, um, do you have children together? No, no. we don't. Okay. Organic blood is my baby. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's a big baby, too. <laughs> it is. It was like 20 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What is the thing that you love the most about being your own uh being your own boss? Um, I just like being able to do whatever I want every single day and I like that I don't have to lie or act like a character to make money. Um mm. so I feel like I don't have to like yeah, I'll just leave it there. But yeah, I just don't have to be a um uh, be anybody who I'm not to to be able to take care of my my desires. And my life is 100% based off of, like, how much I believe, you know, like how committed I'm going to stay to to myself without having that fear to get back up and stop believing in myself. That's really all that this is about because I'm writing my script on a day-to-day basis. Like, me being here on the phone with you, like, all of this stuff, this isn't, this shouldn't just happen. This is a direct manifestation of something that I once wanted in my life. Like, I remember working at a call center, and I hated it there. And I would, like, cry every day before I had to go into work, like, listening to Kanye West. Like, you know, one day I'm going to get me on my spaceship and fly out of this place. I just hated it. And Mm -hmm. I started hating it so much that I brought my journal with me to work. And I would sit there, and I would just, like, talk mad crap to my journal all day. Like, yeah, this 
this girl and this and da da da. And I would just hate every write everything I hated about that job. And then I would say like, and I I what I really want to be doing with my time is like having photo shoots, creating my own products, traveling the world, um, helping people. Da da da. I would just write out all this stuff and like. So me being here with you is it, like it was written in my journal, you know. So that's really just it. Pinning my next story, like what's what's the next thing you want to write? Because that's where you're about to go. Wow, wow, that is beautiful. And we're we're honored to have you here, Tiffany. Very honored to have you here. Thank we you. Really love your story. I mean, because you're very inspiring. Um, I mean, like I said, I just really love the way you are transparent and you spoke about your beginnings. And it's like, look at you now. You know, this is just a beautiful journey that you're on, and I know that it's inspiring other goddesses that are listening on the line that, you know, have it within them but just don't see how it can be. But please, if you haven't been listening to this story, make sure you replay it and listen back to what she was saying because she brought so much wisdom and knowledge um, about her journey and it can really assist you on your path because, she said she worked at the call center. I worked at a call center. I completely relate. I would hate going to that job every day. <laughs> I hated being on the phone. I hated coming home talking. I didn't even like being on the phone when I came home from that job because it was so depressing. And the phone would never stop ringing. It was just like hell. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's. It's spiritual work in there. It's like they're they're tough on the spirit. Yes. I mean, it's draining. And, I mean, and then, you know, depending on what type of area of call center work you're doing, you're dealing with people's emotional problems, and it's like back-to-back for eight to ten hours a day. And that's, to me, I just don't feel like we're meant to live like that. That's just a mm-hmm. place. You know, we are sovereign beings. We came here with missions, every last one of us, and that's to be free, to be who we are truly meant to be. And, you know, I know that we all have, you know, some people have to work for, you know, the man or whoever, but, you know, it doesn't have to be like that, especially when you know you come here for something bigger and sadder. Mm -hmm. So I just love to have goddesses on, like Tiffany to give her story because, you know, we all are trying to get out of that particular consciousness of working because, to me, it's, it's just it's just a distraction of keeping you from being who you are and, and keeping you from your mission eight hours a day, eight to nine a day. So, you know, just take heed, goddesses. Just, just listen. Just listen because that's why we're here to... Uh, empower and encourage you all to be the goddesses that you truly are and bring that goddess that's within out. And just, we just thank you all for listening and, and thank Tiffany for coming on and sharing her story as well. I mean, it's, I can't say it enough how inspiring it is to hear her um, break it down. I mean, she really, really dropped some wisdom, stuff to touch my spirit, I know. And I'm pretty sure holistic gal. So, I can't thank you enough for coming. I just really can. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It was a great conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Tiffany, so, what's on the... Give... Oh. Go ahead, holistic gal. Or, Tiffany, sure. I was going to say, if you want to... Um, Give out your information where our listeners can contact you at. Sure, yeah. My website is yoniaggs.com, and you can find me at on Instagram at Tiffany Janae, T-I-S-S-A-N-Y-J-A-N-A-Y, and you can also find us at OB Yoni Eggs on Instagram and Facebook. Um, and then if you want to check out our videos on YouTube, just go to youtube.com forward slash organic blood and all that information is there. Okay. Hold on one second. I think we have a caller. Let me check this one. Okay. 
Hello, area code two four zero six zero five. Question or comment or blessings for Tiffany? Um, yes, I just tuned in, but um, uh, I, I caught like the tail end of it, um, about the yoni eggs. Um, if you can elaborate, where well, kind of fill me in, what I missed. I'm a late bloomer, so I caught the tail end of it. I'm sorry. I'm just getting off from work and trying to get home to listen oh. to the program. But if you could elaborate on, on uh, about the yoni um, egg, I appreciate it. You want, you want to know what it does? Yes. Oh, I think that the playback would be great for that. Oh, but, um, okay. Yeah, or visiting uh, yoniegs.com, it's all in there. But we just had an amazing hour conversation about it. So definitely when you have some time and you settle down from work, um, hit, playback, hit the replay on this. Okay. Yeah. Wait, wait, is, does it deal with a lot of spirituality? Yeah, it, it's dealing with earth. So I don't know if Earth is considered spiritual, but um, but yeah, still you're dealing with an element from the Earth in connection with your womb space for healing. Yes, mm-hmm. I connect with I connect with the trees and the sun and the moon a lot. Perfect. Then you already yeah. can still. Yes, I I came into my blessings. Well, I came into my spiritual awakening uh, last year. And I started with uh, moon gazing, and then from moon gazing, I went to sun gazing, uh, and and now I'm dealing with like trees and stuff. Awesome, that's beautiful. Right. Well, thank thank you, Goddess, for calling in. Oh, anytime. I you know I try to keep up on everything. I'm a I'm a senior citizen, so I came into a bloom at the <laughs> age. But I'm learning. I'm learning. You're getting there. You're getting there. That's what it's about. Yes, Everybody's I, on the journey. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. I've, I've had a lot of experience with uh, uh, the spiritual awakening, and um, it's truly a blessing. It's truly a blessing. It keeps me more humble. I don't have any fear within me about anything, and I think it's a beautiful thing. It really yes. is. Make, make sure when you, when you play back, just uh, play back and you can hear, uh, or you might hear, before, well, you you hear before we get off the air, Tiffany's contact information again so you can um, be able to order, uh, some, you know, she has Joni eggs there and you can read up more about what they do and what type might be best for you, suited for you, so. Oh, okay. Sounds great. Okay. Girls, well, keep up the good work. It's a great show. Very All right. great show. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I say. I say. I say. All right. Well, it is definitely a beautiful journey. I think everybody is on, no matter what age or gender, everybody's on a journey. So mm-hmm. we're all going to get the. Where we're supposed to in the end. Well, Miss Tiffany, we want to thank you for coming on the Goddess Suite and just sharing your knowledge with us. And we're just, we're so thankful. Yeah. It's wonderful to listen to the journey and everything. We, uh, can you please give out your information again? Yeah, you can find my website, yoniegs.com. That's Y-O-N-I-E-G-G-S.com. Um, I'm Tiffany Janay, T-I-S-S-A-N-Y, J-A-N-A-Y, and you can find me under that name on all your social medias. Right. All right. And you guys, please check her out on YouTube. I was getting caught up watching her video. <laughs> They're very good. I just made a new one, too. Did you see yeah. that new one? Okay. Yeah, it's called, what, the, what's the new the, it's called the Yoni Egg Lifestyle. 
Oh, okay, okay. I will be watching it tonight. <laughs> oh, They're very, very engaging. I love them. I love them. So make sure you check Tiffany out on YouTube and get all your knowledge, especially the goddess that just called in. Uh, or anything you want to know about the Yoni eggs, you can um, hit Tiffany up on YouTube for sure, and you'll get all the information you need there. Yes. Right. Thank you, ladies. Thank you again, Thank you. Goddess, and hopefully we will be able to connect with you in person one day. That would be beautiful. Yes. Where are you all located? We are in like Washington, the... D.C. Mm-hmm. Okay. Maryland, yeah. D.C. area. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So we're, in, we're, we're, we're not there. We haven't gotten to Georgia yet, but. I think we'll be there very soon. <laughs> we know a lot of people down there. <laughs> so we got to collaborate. We would look, really look forward to collaborating with you on some sort of project in the future. I'm put that in the atmosphere. <laughs> For sure, yeah, I'm into it. All right, all right. Well, thanks again, Goddess. You've been beautiful. Um, we thank you for sharing everything with us tonight on the Goddess Week. And if you all have any questions or anything you want us to forward to Tiffany, you can send them to the Goddess Suite as well, or, or any questions or uh, information that you need, you can send all your requests to goddesssuite at com. All right. Peace, love, and light. And we will see you all on Thursday night at 9 p.m. Bye-bye. All right. Good night. Peace and love.